You know, a sad fact of reality is that in general, Godzilla has not translated well into the world of video games, and thus G-Fans have mostly been deprived of experiencing a truly great Godzilla game. And it is for this very reason that I was looking forward to this game before it came out, simply titled Godzilla. It originally came out on the PlayStation 3 as a Japanese exclusive in December 2014, only making its way to the rest of the world 7 months later when it came out on the PS4, with updated graphics and additional monsters to play. Now I pre-ordered this as soon as I could because being a Godzilla fan, I was starved for a Godzilla game to play, and when you're starving, you're willing to eat anything. Having been out on the PS3 for months, I already knew exactly what kind of game I was getting, and thus I had already known about the abysmal response to it. But I figured, what the hell, we don't get Godzilla games very often, and I'd like to try it for myself, so why not? And you know what? I was pleasantly surprised by how much fun I was having playing it. For hours I had a big grin on my face as I stomped my way through buildings, blowing helicopters out of the sky with my atomic breath, and beating the crap out of other monsters. It was the kind of experience I had wanted for a long time. It made me feel like a kid again. Now I know what you're probably thinking, and before you say it, yes, I am fully aware that by all objective metrics, this is not a very good game, which I will get into. But with that being said, I think a far more interesting question to consider is whether this can be considered a good Godzilla game. And by that I mean how well does it capture the essence of the source material. It is with this state of mind that I'm going to give this game a fair shot. I'm going to avoid hyperbole and superlatives and properly assess the quality of this game as best I can. So does Godzilla on the PS4 deserve the hate? Let's find out. Godzilla is an action-adventure game where you play as, well, Godzilla of course, along with a host of other famous kaiju from the franchise. And your goal is simple, destroy everything in your path, while both squashing the human military and defeating other monsters along the way. Within this basic framework, the game is divided into three major modes, God of Destruction, King of the Monsters, and Multiplayer. God of Destruction is where the meat of the game lies, and it has you and whatever monster you choose making your way from level to level, demolishing cities, and more specifically, targeting and destroying G energy generators. The more you destroy, be it military vehicles, buildings, or generators, the larger your monster grows, making you more powerful. Often each level will have requirements for you to meet, such as destroying the generators within a time limit, or specific challenges for you to beat, like destroying a certain amount of helicopters, all of which allow you to maximize your size increase. Make it to the end without dying, and you play as Burning Godzilla, where you face off against the Super X3, and should you reach 100 meters tall, the 2014 American Godzilla, who serves as the mode's true final boss. You can also play God of Destruction mode as one of the good monsters, such as Mothra or Mecha Godzilla, to which your goal is not to destroy, but to defend the city from the attacking monster. The other two modes are King of the Monsters mode, which has you fight against one monster after another, each one increasingly more difficult than the last, and Multiplayer, which allows up to three players to fight against one another online. There's also what's called the Diorama mode, which allows you to place models of monsters in certain positions and angles, which can be neat if you want to recreate certain moments or iconic shots from the films, but beyond that, it's superfluous and not really worth mentioning beyond this point. So, as you can see, there is not a lot of content in this game, which is its single biggest flaw. It only takes a few hours to experience everything Godzilla has to offer, leaving you to spend the majority of your time replaying God of Destruction mode over and over again to unlock other monsters and level up their abilities. And while this can be fun for a while, it doesn't take long for boredom to set in, a feeling only amplified by the simplistic, arcadey gameplay, the barebones, practically non-existent story, and the staggeringly small variety of maps to trudge through. The truth of the matter is that this game feels like it belongs in an arcade, not on a console, or at least not as a full priced game. There is absolutely no justifying the full $60 price it initially went for at release. It is extremely apparent within minutes of playing that this is a budget title, and thus should have cost at most half of that. Aside from the monsters, the graphics are subpar even for PS3 standards, and the menus and voice acting give off Earth Defense Force vibes, a classic Z-grade Xbox 360 game that I highly recommend. I truly believe that had this game been cheaper or originated as an arcade game, I don't believe God Godzilla would have received the backlash it got, because if you set aside the shallowness of the overall experience and take it for what it is, this is actually one of the more solid Godzilla experiences ever translated to a video game. No other game has been able to capture the feel of the Japanese films quite like Godzilla on the PS4 does. In both style and design, it manages to be lavishly faithful to its source material in a way no other recent Godzilla game has. If anything, the various faults and low-budget quality 
only enhances this effect, though that doesn't make it a virtue. Where the game excels the most is the monsters. While the rest of the game feels cheap, the character models of the monsters are actually fairly well detailed and articulated. It is clear that most of the graphic fidelity went into getting the monsters to look and move right, because every monster is ripped straight from the movies. And thankfully, the game has a fairly large cast of monsters to play as. Other than a few notable exceptions, almost every major kaiju from the Godzilla universe is present here, adding even more authenticity to the overall package. The monsters are the true stars, and seeing them in motion is a sight to behold. Whatever monster you are playing as, you'll have the most recognizable attacks at your disposal with which to lay waste to the city with, and the results are often spectacular. Godzilla on the PS4 may be a budget title, but it makes up for it somewhat by having some of the most satisfying destruction effects I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing in a video game. Even the best Godzilla games like Destroy All Monsters Melee couldn't get the destruction quite right, but this game does. Instead of being realistic, it aims to capture the feel of the destruction seen in the movies, which means buildings fall into pieces like old school models, with sparks and explosions going every which way, and it's gratifying to no end. It even nails the little details, such as the interior flashing that was commonly seen in the movies, here used as a visual cue that a building is about to explode. I really can't stress this enough. For all its major issues, Godzilla on the PS4 translates the destructive stylings of the films remarkably well. It's the little things, like walking through a cluster of small buildings and watching them crumble effortlessly underneath your feet. It's a simple pleasure that no other Godzilla game has given me. If there's one thing you need to get absolutely right in a Godzilla game, this is it. So credit where credit is due. Along with the character models and the destruction effects, the game also does a great job making you feel like a giant monster. Gameplay is incredibly slow, there is no running or flying from one end of the map to the other, and every step takes a second or two, which can be painfully monotonous for some, but if you're a G fan, you'll appreciate how well this style makes you feel the weight and power of these creatures. Adding to this feeling are the clunky, awkward controls, which, again, will prove frustrating for most, but for anyone with a love for cheesy Japanese B-monster movies, will prove endearing. It takes some getting used to, but once you play long enough, it will become second nature, and before you know it, you'll feel like you are playing a Godzilla movie. This is what makes the monster fighting in this game truly work. Make no mistake, this is not a fighting game. In fact, labeling this a fighting game is inaccurate and ignorant of what the game is really trying to do. While the fighting mechanics aren't good in any traditional sense of the word, they are good at translating the visual style of an old school cinematic kaiju fight into video game form. A good fight where the monsters are trading blows, smashing into each other, and spamming beam attacks while buildings explode all around them is bound to get any G fan's blood pumping. It really does feel like you are participating in an interactive fight scene from a Godzilla movie. Unfortunately, this fighting system doesn't lend itself well to the multiplayer. There is little infrastructure to support it, and since there is no finesse to the fighting system, it is all too easy to get tag-teamed or obliterated with no chance of recovery, making for a very frustrating experience. Still, the addition of multiplayer is appreciated, even if it is broken. Sound design is also really stellar. Like the character models, the various roars of the monsters have been taken straight from the source material, making every fight sound as if it were coming from the films themselves. The use of select Ifukubi tracks also enhances the experience, though if you ask me, the game doesn't utilize them quite enough, only breaking out the classics when the disaster level increases and the military goes on the assault. Instead, the majority of the music heard in the game is original, and while not bad, it's not particularly memorable. Now, with all that being said, the critics of this game aren't wrong. It is repetitive, it is shallow, the graphics are subpar, the controls are obtuse, and overall the game just has an unmistakably low-budget quality to it. You know kind of like the old Godzilla films. I'm not saying this as an excuse for the game, but I do think it has a cheesiness to it that makes it more endearing, and makes certain elements of it more tolerable if you go into it with the right mindset. Would I have liked a super polished multi-million dollar Godzilla game? Of course I would, but for what it is, Godzilla on the PS4 is a good time in short bursts. It's a good Godzilla simulator, a simple and mindlessly fun game that captures the look and feel of the Japanese films, the type of game that you can pop in and play for an hour or two 
to whenever you want to get your Godzilla fix. While absolutely undeserving of the full $60 price it initially sold for, outside of that fact, I don't think it deserved the critical flogging it received when it originally came out. As a $25 game, however, this is certainly worth the price for any Godzilla fan. And now that enough time has passed, you can get it for that price. So if you are a Godzilla fan but haven't tried it because of the negative response, find yourself a cheap copy and play it for yourself. Is it one of the best Godzilla games ever made? Well, that's debatable and probably depends on where you're coming from. Objectively speaking, the Pipeworks fighting games are the highest quality Godzilla games around, but personally I think this game does a better job translating the feel of the movies and making you feel like a giant monster. It scratches a very particular itch. It's clear when you play it that it was made by fans for the fans, and so as someone with a passion for Godzilla, I can't help but enjoy it. I truly hope for more and better Godzilla games in the future, but until then, Godzilla on the PS4 will have to satiate my appetite for destruction. But now I want to know what you think. Have you played Godzilla, either on the PS3 or the PS4, and if so, what are your thoughts about it? Did you enjoy your experience, or did it frustrate you to no end? You can let me know in the comments, or if you're so inclined, you can follow the Up From The Depths Twitter account and get in touch with me there. Finally, if you enjoyed this review, then it would be great if you could give it a thumbs up, and if you know any other Godzilla or Kaiju enthusiasts in your life, help this channel grow by sharing this with other G-Fans. I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.